And now to one man's powerful bond with man's best friend. The story begins with a simple act of kindness from a Marine stationed in Iraq. And it is told in the new book, Nubs, the true story of a mutt, a Marine, and a miracle. Marine Major Brian Dennis and Nubs, good morning to good both morning. of you. Mm -hmm. So let's go back to the fall of 2007. Brian, it's mm -hmm. your second tour of duty in Iraq, and mm -hmm. your, your assignment is to help train Iraqi soldiers. So do you, you go to one of these border forts near the western border mm -hmm. of, of um, Iraq, and there are always stray dogs around these forts, mm -hmm. but there's something special about this dog. What was it about this dog? You know, it, it just uh, as soon as I met him, he just kind of uh, jumped up and, uh, and started playing with me. And, and actually, some of the uh, pictures in the book is, uh, is like the first time we ever met. He just kind of flipped over on his belly, started, uh, started rubbing his belly, and uh, we just kind of had a he really, my whole team, we just kind of uh, bonded with him as soon as we met him. He's just a, obviously a unique character. His uh, ears w were cut off, so we just started calling him Nubs. Why were his ears cut off? You know, one of the uh, one of the Iraqi soldiers uh, ended up doing it. I guess some, sometimes they do that. They said to uh, make the dogs tougher or something. So the, the Iraqis actually use the dogs as a, like an early warning system. They let them live around the border forts because they'll alert them to anyone approaching. And uh, it's doesn't make much sense to me. But you, you took to the dog, and the dog obviously took to you. And over the next couple of months, you'd go back and forth to that fort, and you would see him. At one point, he had been stabbed in the side with a screwdriver by somebody, and, yeah. and you thought you were going to lose him. Yeah, that's right. It's uh, Every couple weeks or so, we'd end up patrolling up in that same area of the border. And uh, this one time, when I, went, when I went up there, he had a big wound on his left side. One of the... Uh, one of the other Iraqis had told me that one of the soldiers had gotten mad and uh, stabbed, stabbed him, him with a big screwdriver, and it was he looked terrible. We, we didn't think he was going to make it. He was all uh, infected, and it was bad. But he not only made it, um, he, he remained your buddy whenever you'd be there. And then finally in January, you take off to go 70 miles mm -hmm. to the border with, with Jordan, essentially, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. assuming you might never see the dog again. Yeah. And he starts to follow, but you're in Humvees. There's no way he can catch up. A couple of days later, what happens? Well, somehow, and that's the big mystery. No one really knows how he did it, but uh, he saw the directions we, the direction we went, and uh, he just took off and uh, and started started off the direction we went. And like I said, uh, 70, 75 miles or so is how far he ended up walking. And. Uh, he, he found our team. It was just the craziest thing when he when he walked up. It was just amazing. That must have been a shock to you, right, to suddenly see the dog. It was. It was. Uh, I was actually inside uh, the Iraqi battalion headquarters, and one of my Marines came running in and, and told me he's like, uh, he's like, you're not going to believe who's outside. And I'm thinking of, he's talking about a person. I'm like, who's outside? Send him. He's like. Nubs is outside. I'm like, I can't, it can't be Nubs. There's no way. So I go running out there, and he just jumps up on me and is going crazy. And uh, and yeah, he, he became basically the mascot for you guys, except there were a few soldiers. It's against military rules to it have is. dogs. It is. And and you were reported, and they basically said to you, the, the commander said, get rid of the dog yeah, or else. Yeah, pretty much. Get rid of the dog or else is pretty much it. We You know, we knew that, uh, I mean, we wouldn't have actively brought a dog back with us. You know, we knew it was against the rules, but since he followed us, you know, we're kind of kind of overlooked it a little bit. We're like, well, we're in here in the middle of nowhere. Who can it hurt? But uh, yeah, some of the some of the people got upset and basically told on us. And the commander said, "Get rid of the dog." But instead, you made it your mission to get that dog to the United States. It cost yeah. about five thousand dollars. You put out a, a basically a plea yeah. over the internet to raise money for the dog. Yeah, I just kind of asked some, some sent an email to some friends like, "Hey, it's going to cost a lot of money. If uh, you want to chip in, feel free. We're going to we're going to rescue the little guy." And oh man, the response was overwhelming. So many people wanted to help. And uh, that's pretty cool. And you got your, your interpreter's brother, I guess, t took him over the border yep. into Jordan. And then he was flown out from Jordan after, I guess, the Jordanian King's veterinarian. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. Uh, checked him out. And then he, he took a plane ride to Chicago, hooked up with friends of yours, then to San Diego. Yep. You're still in Iraq. You finally get back to San Diego in March 2008. What was that reunion like? It was awesome. I mean, uh, I'd, I was about a month behind him, so... Uh, Basically, I, as soon as I see him, he just goes crazy again, jumps up on me, and is all excited to see me. And uh, the, the reunion is great. You know, at this when he first came back, though, he had some adjustment issues. You know, uh, a good friend of mine, Graham, uh, with with uh, uh, Snug Pet Resort in San Diego, ended up taking him in, really working with him, really just totally, totally just just made him I mean I can't I can't say enough how much my friend Graham helped me just uh, and my friends Eric and Chrissy took, they took him in adopted him uh, you yeah. know we we uh, think so often about the our um, men and women who are 
fighting mm -hmm. overseas and what they are up against and, and the challenges emotionally as well as physically. What did this dog, what does this dog mean to you? Well, you know, I think that, I think a lot of soldiers, Marines end up connecting with dogs out there and it's not, it's the more I heard from a lot of people who'd uh, been in Vietnam and even World War II people, the similar uh, People, I guess it's a, an escape was what it was for my team. You know, the dogs out there, people who are dog people, you just get it, you know. And dog come run, run up to you with his tail wagging. And it was a, it was an escape from the, the drudgery, the mundane life out there at times, the bad things you'd see at times. Uh, it, was just, it was an escape, and now, you know, now it's a friend. Yeah, and you helped him escape from a bad time. It's a yeah. wonderful story, but rarely about companionship and love. Yeah. Well, I feel lucky, you know, and I got a little buddy, and uh, it's pretty cool. <laughs> Yeah, thank you so yeah. much, Thanks. Major Dennis. Pleasure. Thank, thank you, you Nubs. Who's really chilling now that he's a California guy? Obviously, yeah. the We're book is, is Nubs: The True Story of a Mutt, a Marine, and a Miracle. Up next, how to keep your kitchen from making your family sick. But first, this is today on NBC. <laughs> <laughs>